I've been interested for many years in how quantum systems uh, become classical. And what I'd like to say in this uh, brief discussion is why some systems are easily classicalized and why some systems aren't. Um, so the standard mechanism for classicalization is you have, for example, a particle of mass m uh, scattering off a thermal environment with temperature t uh, and dissipation gamma. This is the normal decoherence mechanism uh, through a thermal environment. And you have uh, a time scale associated with this, the de decoherence time scale, um, h bar squared over m gamma kt. And it always involves some sort of length scale um, in this, uh, this situation. So for example, when you're looking at interference and you have two packets separated by some length scale L, the, the distance is the distance between the two packets. And when you put this in for typical macroscopic values of mass, uh, temperature, dissipation, and length, and that is typically extremely small. So that's how interferences and also actually entanglement are killed extremely effectively by the standard decoherence mechanism of interaction uh, with the environment. So that's actually extremely well known. Now, what's actually less well known is well, what happens when you apply this to other quantum phenomena like quantum mechanical reflection uh, or the Zeno effect. And uh, with my former postdoc, Dan Beddingham, we looked into this a couple of years ago. So in quantum mechanical reflection, for example, you have um, a barrier and uh, a plane wave coming in with some momentum P. And then you can also ask, uh, to what extent is the, the reflection? You've got transmission and reflection, but to what extent is the quantum mechanical reflection of the barrier killed by the same decoherence process? Well, the issue is about the length scale. When you have a plane wave coming in, there's only one uh, uh, length scale coming in, which is actually the Compton wavelength, um, h bar over p. And that's actually pretty small in general, uh, unlike this situation. And in uh, simple examples where you just plug in this Compton wavelength into the decoherence time, you find that the decoherence time is big. Um, so uh, decoherence through an environment is not act for, for the incoming particle is not in fact the way in which reflection is killed um, and, and uh, classicalized. So this actually means, interestingly, that quantum mechanical reflection is a very robust quantum phenomenon. Unlike interference and entanglement, which are killed easily, quantum reflection is not. So this actually leaves the question, uh, how is actually quantum mechanical reflection killed? Because I know when I walk up the stairs, quantum mechanically, part of me would reflect backwards, but that never actually happens. Well, the answer, in fact, you also have to look at the target. We don't actually scatter off abstract uh, square uh, potentials like that. You actually scatter off a p another particle. So if you actually attach the environment, you think of this as being a big particle, so a small one scattering off a big one. If you classicalize the particle, the, the target particle, by coupling that to the environment, then you find actually that the reflection is attenuated and you get uh, the correct classical limit coming out. Now, this also applies, in fact, to the quantum Zeno effect, um, which you can show quite easily is in fact equivalent to, for, for a point particle system, is actually equivalent to having a complex potential. In the quantum Zeno effect, uh, you have a complex potential here, the reflected stuff gets uh, suppressed, but you also get reflection. Now using the same mechanism, you can also argue that the quantum Zeno effect uh, goes away in the classical limit. So you see there's this division between situations like interferences, entanglement, which are killed actually quite easily by the standard decoherence mechanism, but then other ones like reflection and the Zeno effect, which fall into a different category. They're harder to get rid of. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>